Can we see, sir? Achana, ma'am, we can begin. Good evening. Namaste, sir. Good evening. Good so, evening. sir, with your permission, may we begin, sir? Achana, ma'am, you may please. Okay. A very good evening, everyone. On behalf of Gujarat Research Society's Antra Jivandas College of Education, I, Dr. Archana Katkeri, welcome you all to this one-day national-level webinar organized on the occasion of National Voters Day. The National Voters Day is observed on Jan 25th every year to mark the foundation day of the Election Commission of India in 1950. This day is meant to encourage, facilitate, and maximize enrollment of new voters. Hence, keeping this in view, today's webinar will be focusing on voting as a fundamental right, which will help to spread the message across the masses and especially the youth who are our nation builders. I now request our college IQSC coordinator, Dr. Usha Borkar, to please deliver the welcome address. Over to you, Chama. Thank you, Dr. Katgiri. Namaste and good evening to one and all. It is my proud privilege to have received this opportunity on behalf of our parent body, Gujarat Research Society, our principal ma'am, Dr. Anita Swami, and the entire HJC team to welcome our esteemed resource person, Advocate Punik Chaturji, uh, Chaturvedi Ji, Advocate Honorable Supreme Court of India, and all the teacher and student participants to this one day national webinar on voting as a fundamental right organized by HJC under the aegis of RUSA. Gujarat Research Society's Hansraj Jivandas College of Education is a pioneer teacher education institution and one of the very few autonomous colleges of education in India. Since its inception in 1969, HGC is continuously striving to produce quality and relevant teachers who believe and practice their duty of educating the youth beyond the four walls of the classroom. A step in this direction is the organization of the one day national webinar on voting as a fundamental right on the occasion of National Voters Day, which is celebrated on 25th January every year. 25th January is a foundation day of the Election Commission of India, which came into existence in 1950. This day was first celebrated in 2011 to encourage young voters to take part in the electoral, uh, electoral process. This year is the 12th National Voters Day. The objective is not only to encourage the youth to participate in the voting process, but also help all eligible voters to realize that the right to vote is the basic right. Enthusiastic participation of people in the voting process is the key to healthy democracy. It is indeed heartening to realize that we have more than 350 participants from different states of our country, from Goa, Gujarat, Arunachal Pradesh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Rajasthan, Assam, West Bengal, Chhattisgarh, Orissa, Bihar, Punjab, Haryana, Telangana, Himachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, Madhya Pradesh, Kerala, and we also have one international participant from Romania. Such immense participation in this national webinar truly reflects 
the commitment of all to the cause of realizing that no voter is left behind. Dear participants, we truly appreciate your presence here today. We once again welcome all of you and hope that you will definitely find the session by our esteemed resource person extremely informative and valuable in accomplishing your responsibility of fulfilling the shared goal of the Election Commission of India. With this, I request my colleague and webinar coordinator, Dr. Shreema Banerjee, to take the session ahead. Thank you, Dr. Borkar. Very good evening to one and all. Namaste, Puneet Chaturvedi ji. I am really honored to introduce such an esteemed guest to the participants. Sri Puneet Chaturvedi ji belongs to a family of lawyers for four generations, having associate law offices across India. He has been practicing as an arguing counsel for the last 32 years and appearing in Supreme Court of India, as well as at various high courts across India, besides practicing in Bombay High Court. He has taught LLM in University of Mumbai and LLB in Government Law College, Churchgate, Mumbai, and has been regularly invited by various other colleges. He also writes legal articles and columns in magazines and websites. His articles and speeches are widely hailed. Shri Puneet Chaturvedi ji has also been addressing the annual law training and lecture series conducted by the Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa on the Constitution of India. He provides free legal aid and argued several public interest litigations. He has addressed different medical forums on medical legal topics. He has been addressing and enlightening several professional forums on various subjects of law. Interestingly, his talks are attended by judiciary also. Sri Puneet Chaturvedi ji has also been appearing as a law expert in the property show on NDTV and is invited by different television channels to speak on various legal topics. Interestingly, Sri Puneet Chaturvedi ji is also a noted scholar of the Indian scriptures and the ancient ones that too like Ved Vedant, Upanishads, Puran, Bhagavad Gita, Ramayan, etc. and has developed extremely lucid and pragmatic applications from Ved Vedant. His discourses on the logical interpretation of Ved Vedant, Bhagavad Gita, Ramayan and other ancient scriptures are organized across India and abroad. He has conducted Vedantic workshops in schools, colleges, management institutions, corporate houses, chambers of commerce, jails, clubs, courts, and the list goes on. He also writes articles on Vedantic principles. He is ably assisted by his wife, Madam Rashmi Chaturvedi. I'm fortunate enough to really know, sir, and I must be thankful to you from bottom of my heart, sir, within a very short notice of a time. Although you can understand such a busy personality he is, he agreed to deliver this talk of his expertise on National Voters Day. So once again, on behalf of our principal, Dr. Anita Swami, entire management of Gujarat Research Society, faculty, students of HGCE, and all the participants, we wholeheartedly welcome you, Puneet sir, and we look forward to listen to you. Over to you, Puneet sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shrimaji for your 
perfection and the connection which you said. It's indeed a pleasure to have been invited once again to address you all. Although on a lighter note, I must confess that addressing you all through this video conference deprives me of a wonderful coffee which you had to offer me earlier when I visited your institute. And uh, in your principal's chamber, you provided me lovely coffee and sandwiches, which I really miss. I wish soon this COVID gets over and I could encash my pending sandwiches and coffees. Now coming to the topic, it's indeed a pleasure that you have an audience across, from across India, from several states, which of course we could not do it when we do it offline. So that is what is something to give up and something to take. So I welcome all the audience from across India who's been attending this extremely important topic which we are going to enlighten you today. See, India is considered to be the largest democracy in the world. Largest democracy from the point of view of the population, not from the point of view of the geographical territory. And also it is considered to be the largest democracy because the elections for the parliament of India that we know as Lok Sabha, are conducted across India by the provisions of one single constitution of India. Although US, from the point of view of the territorial area, has much larger area. US, you may be aware that has almost 50 states, 5 0. But the difference is that US does not has one single constitution. Unlike India, there every state has its own constitution. Therefore, India is distinguished to have a single constitution of India which is applicable across states. So now as far as elections are concerned, as the topic of today says that voting being a fundamental right. Now let me first of all tell you what is the meaning of fundamental right and other rights. See, there are many kinds of rights. The first and foremost is fundamental right. Slightly lower than the fundamental right is constitutional right. Below constitutional right comes statutory rights. Now the constitutional right means the rights which are provided by the constitution of India, but do not reflect under part three of the constitution of India. Because part three of the constitution of India is dedicated to fundamental rights. Fundamental rights appear from Article 12 to Article 35 of the Constitution of India, which comes under Part 3. So before I move forward, I must inform you that the Constitution of India has as good as 25 parts and 12 schedules. And as on today, more than 444 articles, 
which is again the lengthiest written constitution of the world. When it was passed on 26 November 1949, at that time it had 22 parts and eight schedules. But with several amendments now, more than a century amendments have been taken out. It has been further enlarged to 25 parts and 12 schedules and more than 444 articles. And please remember this Constitution of India was passed by the Constituent Assembly of India on 26th November 1949, which is celebrated as Law Day as on today. Though it is passed by the Constituent Assembly on 26th November 1949, it was made applicable and enforced on 26th January 1952, months later than, the, than it was passed. And because it was made applicable and forced on 26th January 1950, that is the day which we celebrate as Republic Day. And between the Law Day and the Republic Day, one day earlier than the Republic Day comes this National Voters Day, which is 25th January. Because on 25th January, just one day before we declared ourselves as a republic, election commission was come into force, was constituted. So now when we were talking about the rights, fundamental rights are those rights which reflect on the part three of the constitution of India, between article 12 to article 35. And incidentally, the topic of today stating that voting being a fundamental right, though it is practically, yes, every citizen of India has a right to vote unless disqualified by certain parameters which I'll en enlighten you. But the truth is that voting right does not reflect or does not form part of part three of the constitution of India. So technically, it is not a fundamental right. But it is a right because voting as a right is given under part 15 of the constitution of India. And to be more precise, under Article 326 of the Constitution of India. Now, Article 326 pronounces that voting shall be a right on the basis of adult suffrage. And what is adult suffrage? Anybody who is not less than 18 years of age is entitled to vote. And it further states that there shall be no discrimination on this voting right on the basis of caste, creed, religion, sex, place of birth. That means you belong to whatever caste, whatever race, whatever religion, whether you are fa male, female, cross-gender, 
or you live in whichever part of the country. Article 326 gives you the constitutional right to vote. Except if you are a person of unsound mind. If you're a person of unsound mind, you're disqualified from being voted. Except if you have been convicted under some crime. Convicted criminals do not possess the right to vote. If you have left the citizenship of India or left the country, then you are not entitled to vote. So Article 326 puts very clearly that the qualification to vote is only your adulthood. Now here I must clarify that in the original constitution of India, the adulthood was defined at the age not less than 21 years. So in the original constitution of India, the right to vote was given to the citizen of India who has achieved the age of 21. But with the 52nd Amendment of the Constitution of India in the year 1988. This age was reduced to 18. So original was 21. As on today, post 1988, the adult suffrage age is 18 years. So anybody who is more than 18 years in the age is entitled to vote. So if we see it constitutionally and technically, voting right is a constitutional right given to every citizen of India. Although it is as good as a fundamental right, but because it does not reflect in part three, technically it is not a fundamental. I hope I've made this clear to you with what is the difference between the fundamental right and the constitutional right. And the third kind of a right, which I told you, the statutory right, which does not form part in any part of the constitution of India, but is provided by the law passed by the parliament or the legislative assemblies. The laws passed by the parliament or the legislative assemblies of the states are called statutes. And if any right is given in that statute, that is called a statutory right. Which is a notch lower in the degree than the fundamental rights and the constitutional rights. Now moving ahead, it is important to note that the constitution of India is like a powerhouse. Like we have electricity powerhouses from which electricity is generated and supplied to household dwelling houses. Similarly, the constitution of India is the powerhouse which gives power to the parliament and the respective state assemblies of the states to make laws, to make statutes. So our parliament cannot make law which is not consistent with the constitutional of provisions of the constitution of India. 
And you might have seen that sometimes in their enthusiasm, the parliament or the states make law which are against the philosophy of the constitution of India. And those laws are struck down by the Supreme Court of India. If the legislative assemblies make such laws which are inconsistent with the constitution of India, the high court of that state strikes down those laws. Therefore, I said that constitution of India is the powerhouse. Every law in this nation has to gel and be in consistence with the provisions of the constitution of India. And therefore, the elections and the voting happen under Article 325 to Article 329 of the Constitution of India. There are only six articles under Part 15. Now, gaining the power from the Constitution of India, the Parliament of India has made a statute governing the elections and votings. And that statute is called the Representation of People's Act. So the primary provisions in respect of elections and votings is given under the Constitution of India, whereas the actual practical execution of those provisions and the nitty gritties, how to operate and the procedure, how to conduct election, etc., is given under a statute called Representation of People's Act. Now, before we move ahead, elections are conducted by a constitutional authority. Mind you, which is neither the part of the government nor it is appointed by the government. Like the Supreme Court of India or the high courts of every state are independent body from the government. They are constitutional bodies. Similarly, under Article 324, Election Commission of India is an independent body, a constitutional body. It is not part of the government. And therefore, the elections are not conducted by the government. And therefore, this propaganda that elections are manipulated by the government, etc., is basically misnomer because the government has no role in conducting elections. Elections are conducted by an independent constitutional body called Election Commission of India, which you can find the details of under Article 324 of the Constitution of India. Now, originally, 324 provided only one election commissioner. I don't know how much of, how many of you audience must be having that idea when one gentleman called T. N. Session became the election commissioner of India. If you are too young, you may not know that. And even if you are, some of you are old, but may not remember. But he was a very, very vibrant, dynamic person who happened to become the election commissioner of India in late 80s and early 90s. He metamorphosed the entire election procedure and did it properly legally. He started invoking and enforcing the law of the land. And all the political parties across the spectrum of India got so rattled because now they had to follow the law. Earlier election commissioners must be a little lenient. 
This man was very strict as far as laws were concerned. He started implementing the laws to very strictness. And the political parties of India Barring not a single one, all of them got rattled. And they brought an amendment in the Parliament of India to dilute the provisions of the Election Commission of India. And they made that single election commissioner, they made a panel. that minimum three commissioners must be there, out of which one will be the chief election commissioner. So then a new post was carved out, chief election commissioner, CEC. Earlier, there were only one, so he was the one who was chief and he was the one who was subordinate. Now became three, minimum three election commissioners, out of which one will be the chief election commissioner and every decision will be taken by majority. So if two are on one side, even if there is a chief election commissioner having the otherwise idea, he will have to go by the majority. They did so to dilute that one man's supreme power. So as on today, there are a panel of election commissioners, out of which one is the chief election commissioner, whose term is almost six years, or till he achieves or attains the age of 65 years. And mind you, like a Supreme Court judge, election commissioner is directly appointed by the president of India, not by the government. And as far as other commissioners or regional commissioners to conduct state elections, the president of India appoints regional election commissioners in consultation with the election commission of India. So who is to be appointed regional commissioner? Even the president of India all alone cannot decide. He has to consult election commissioner of India and then appoint the regional commissioners. All this you can find under article 300 and 24 of the Constitution of India. Now, electoral rolls is a very important part to gives you, which gives you voting right. Now, where is this electoral role? It is also within part 15 of the Constitution of India. It is the election commission of India, which is responsible to prepare electoral rolls. And at the advent of the Constitution of India, voting right was as per the registered voter whose name appears in the electoral roll. But later, even those provisions are amended. And now a citizen of India, having an age of more than 18 years, can vote only if he has a voter's ID card. So although your name may be appearing in the electoral roll, but if you does not possess, if you do not possess the photo ID, it will be a difficulty. And you'll have to do little heckling with the returning officer that I am the one whose name is appearing, then you have to show your other photo IDs. And then you have to see, say that I am the one who's entitled to vote. And remember, despite all these precautions, impersonation happens. Sometimes it has been found that a legitimate voter, when he reaches to the voting booth, he finds that a vote has been cast in his name. This is called impersonation. 
Now that impersonation has been controlled quite up to a limit by this photo ID card, election card. Because now the election officer can see your face and say that, sir, you are not the one whose name is appearing here because it's not matching with your photograph. But still rigging happened. Booth capturing happened. Where the dominant political party captures the election booth and Earlier, they used to put stamp on the ballot paper. Now they put stamp on the electing electric voting machine. This is called EVM. And one more recent phenomena, which you must be hearing in the news. Jo bhi haar jata hai, wo apni haar ko swikar nahi karta hai. वो ईवीएम को जिम्मेदार ठहराता है इफ एनी पोलिटिकल पार्टी और एनी पोलिटिकल कैंडिडेट लूजेस इलेक्शन देर इज नो मेथड ऑफ इंट्रोस्पेक्शन दैट आई मस्ट हैव बीन शॉर्ट ऑफ माय ड्यूटीज आई मे नॉट बी दैट पॉपुलर अगेंस्ट माय राइवल ही पुट्स द बर्डन ऑन इलेक्ट electronic voting machine evm so this is from our childhood school story angur khatte jo angur haath mein nahi aaye wo khatte hain aur jo muh mein chale gaye wo sare meethe to jo jeet jata hai election वो कभी ईवीएम की बात नहीं करता है ये ईवीएम को दोष सिर्फ हारे लोग ही देते हैं एंड दिस इज हैपनिंग अक्रॉस इंडिया हु एवर लूजेज ही लूजेज ड्यू टू ईवीएम मशीन दोज विन विन ड्यू टू देर ओन पॉपुलरिटी दे से दैट आई डिड अ क्रेडिटेबल जॉब टू विन पुअर ईवीएम आई पी टी नाइट here it one more interesting aspect is not not a single political party till date even before the supreme court of india could provide a single proof about any defect in the evm till date nothing in the supreme court has been presented but a narrative has been created a false narrative and we the people of india are quite vulnerable we tend to believe like i used to believe in my childhood when i was a fan of amitabh bachchan movies that one man can defeat 21 men at once and i used to practice fighting with my friends end up being defeated every time i could never become amitabh bachchan but i had that belief that if he could do why can't i and therefore when somebody keeps telling you a falsehood you start believing it that there must be something in the evil and this false narrative a portion or a section of population of india starts believing though none of them could provide any proof and we lawyers are trained to believe only something which is proven but the entire population of india are not trained lawyers so false narratives are believed in any case moving ahead the important provision about voting is that there is a section of society which is normally prevented due to their job profile or due to their age or due to illness who are unable to vote they cannot reach to the polling booth for example 
the people belonging to our armed forces who are posted on borders, they cannot get holiday or opportunity to reach to their respective city or village to cast their vote on the election day. Or for example, even the police personnel whose election duties has been given on such, such some other jurisdiction from their village or area of residence. And therefore they also are unable to cast their vote. Another section is the election officers, those who are conducting election. Their duty may not be in the same area where their, their residence is. They may be posted on somewhere other place. They may have been made election officer to conduct election, returning officers, booth officers. There is another section who are quite old in age, infirm, suffering from some disease. Or they are hospitalized, they cannot be removed from the hospital and to be carried away till the booth, election booth. So there are several such kind of voters who find it very difficult to reach to the polling booth on a given election day. Although on a lighter note, most of us are not that enthusiastic voters only. If the voting day is kept on Monday, we all jump in happiness that Saturday, Sunday being a holiday, Monday is another holiday, let us go out and have some picnic or fun. Who cares for voting? But the provisions are not made keeping holiday mongers in mind. The provisions are made who are actually due to these practical difficulties deprived of voting. And therefore, a provision you can find is that is called ballot paper, voting through postal ballot. Now the postal ballot was carved out for these kind of sections of the society who are either posted away from their residence or from their, where they are registered as a voter. So what they have to do is they have to make an application in their respective area that on such and such day, voting has been declared in my area, but I shall be prevented from reaching to that place due to such and such reason. If you make an application, a form shall be issued to that person through the election commissioner's office to fill that form, seal it and post it. And that shall be counted as the vote. Now, very recently, there also has been a proposal to bring an amendment where the returning officer shall reach to the home of the people who are quite infirm, very aged, or those who are incapable of moving to reach to the booth, voting booth. So there is a proposal which an amendment is also that if you make an application with a reasonable ground, the election officer shall reach out to your place of residence and get your vote. God forbidding, they may not, there is no proposal, but had I had the authority to make a proposal, I should have made a proposal that the election officer should reach to those holiday spots also and catch you there and ask you to vote. Now this can only happen if there is a provision about compulsory voting. India does not have that. Why it does not have is because we Indians are habitual of being provided only rights 
we are not habitual of having duties. There are, as I said, there are fundamental rights, there are constitutional rights, there are statutory rights, and so on and so forth. And even certain film songs have been made, Sada Haq at Thirak. We only talk about Haq. On the streets, people throng that this is our right. We must be provided this right. Have you ever seen any procession claiming that this is our duty? Allow us to perform this duty. There is no procession in India. We don't believe in duties. We only want rights. And therefore, the moment the voting is made compulsory, it'll be, every citizen will become duty bound to perform and then there'll be processions against it. There'll be petitions flooded. The Supreme Court will be flooded with the petitions. How can you compel me to do it? But if the moment you remove that right from a person that you cannot vote, he will go to the Supreme Court. Why? It is my right. So as a right, it is acceptable, but not as a duty to cast vote. Although you'd be surprised that there are several countries in the world where voting is compulsory. And there are punishments provided if you do not vote, unless you have shown reasonable grounds which deprived you from voting on the voting day. There are countries who have put three months ban on the salary. If you do not vote, your three months salary will be cut, will not be given the salary. Hamare ha salary par to sirf teachers believe karte. Bahut sare to government ke offices kahenge, re sab salary bhi milti hai, hum to pata hi nahi, hum to bahut kuch aise hi le lete. Aap teen mehne kya saal bar ki salary kaat li jai, hamei farak kya pata. It is only poor teachers, who have no other resource other than the salary to get their income. I know it personally because my mother was a teacher. And uh, she was a teacher in the era when her salary, she, she reached to the position that her salary was 500 rupees and she came back home and told all of us children that, do you know what salary I'm going to get now? It is 500 rupees. And she was a government teacher, later became principal of the government school. And we had a celebration, Pani Puri, Rasgulla, because her salary was enhanced to 500 rupees. And today in the courts, no file moves till a weightage of 500 rupees is put. My mother's, that era's full salary of a month is required to push a five. Times have changed. And times have changed in the election procedure also, from ballot paper to EVM. And there's another provision called tendered vote, which I just informed you that if somebody else votes on your behalf, and when you reach to the polling booth, you are informed that you have already voted. That is called tendered vote. So for the such person who disputes that I had never come to the polling booth, how can my vote be already given? Then there is a separate register where his name is entered and he is allowed to cast vote from his legitimate identity card. And those votes which are already tendered by that name, they are put in the dispute and that point is resolved later. And that is why you must have been wondering that now that electronic voting has already taken shape, where everything is calculated by putting, pushing the button. What is the meaning of counting? Now there are not paper votes to count. 
this is a machine which is automatically counting but because there are such kind of tendered vote disputed votes which they have to sort out before declaring the result and that is why sometimes it takes time when there is no tendered vote there is no disputed vote then the result is declared instantly now moving ahead there is also a provision being introduced from the year 2013 by a supreme court judgment called people's union for civil liberties versus union of india a supreme court judgment of september 2013 which directed election commission of india to put a column other than the contesting candidates that if a voter does not find any candidate suitable to his choice he can push a button against none of the above i find no candidate of my choice to be elected i don't want to vote and that is called nota nota's full form is none of the above so from 2013 onwards every ballot paper printed has at the end a column called nota and today every evm machine also has a button against nota and interestingly sometimes you may hear the news that nota got the highest vote despite that nota getting the highest vote nota is not elected because there is one more deficiency in our election system that the person elected is only on the basis of who got the highest number of votes among the running contestants even if the highest number is only 25% of the population or the voting list so he is elected so more or less 20% of the population is finding such person to be worth elected get selected and 75% who find him ineligible and may have put nota will have to bear with this winning candidate because there is no percentage provided which is also provided in several nations that the winning candidate must get more than 50% votes otherwise the entire election will be scrapped we do not have such provision so this is one more my personal critical analysis most of you may not agree with it but this is my view that we must also have some percentage that at least a majority of the population must elect you or at least the majority of the population who voted suppose out of the constituency of 500 people if 200 people have voted so there must be a majority of voters who must have elected this person so at least 100 voters must have those who have felt it responsible to go and vote out of those voters minimum 50% must have voted in a particular favor of a candidate then only he should be declared elected incidentally most of the political parties are also backed by a mandate of 35% 40% 41% and they are the ruling parties because we do not have a cut off percentage that minimum voters must be 50% similarly you must when we are doing this critical analysis there are certain things which you need to be proud of being a citizen of india and one such proud feature is that right from the inception of the constitution of india article 326 put a qualification of a voter only the age initially 21 years from 1988 onwards 
18 years. Otherwise, there is no other discrimination. Whether you belong to any religion, you're entitled to vote. Unlike Maldives, Maldives allows you to vote only if you are a Muslim citizen. If you're a citizen of India, non-Muslim, you're not entitled to vote. India does not have such condition. New Zealand was one white country which was the first country to allow its women citizens to vote. Prior to that, women were not allowed to vote. India does not have any such discrimination. Right from inception, we allowed no discrimination on sex. You'd be surprised even the most developed country like US has discrimination on the basis of the color of skin. Blacks and aboriginals were not allowed to vote till recently. And if you start researching, you'd find that most of the states brought the amendment of late. Australia was one such country, which till recently did not allow its aboriginals to vote. And there are several such countries which does not allow you to vote at all. They are not democratic countries. Either they are dictators or they turn to dictate. One of our neighboring countries, though, is considered to be democratic. Why one? Even both the sides which we have, both China and Pakistan. If you read the history of Pakistan, you'll find that democrati democratically elected governments are having a lesser time than military dominated dictators. And as far as China is concerned, there's no democracy. It has only one party rule. Now, I gave you these insights that voting as an Indian citizen is a matter of pride. How many of us feel that pride? We sometimes feel, feel so lethargic to even walk up to the polling booth. We are not habitual to stand in the queues. In our own vision, we consider ourselves to be monarchs that, oh, I, I will never stand in a queue. We find excuses not to go and vote. Now, the importance of the voters, National Voters Day, which is incidentally tomorrow. We have heard the session today, maybe to enlighten you about tomorrow. This is being celebrated from primarily from 2011 onwards, because when the governments felt that the population of India is not feeling that pride to vote. And if you try to push somebody why are you not going to vote? The common reply is, Are mere vote se kya hoga? Main dun ya na dun se ek vote se kya farak pande wala hai? Remember, ek ek karke hi votes count hote hain. Boon boon se ghada bharta hai. So, remember, that even the Indian Penal Code provides some offenses about election. And that is section 171 ENF, that if you try to bribe 
you would be deprived from vote. If you try to destroy the ballot paper or the election booth, you would be deprived as a voter. And corresponding section you'll find under section 125, the representation of People's Act. These are important statutory provisions which I'm trying to bring it in this short period of time. Otherwise, it's a huge elaborate subject. And I told you about that Supreme Court judgment also, which brought nota in 2013. So, as we had begun the journey in 1950 as a republic, there has been several amendments, improvements, as in other parts of law, even in election laws. And remember, a very interesting amendment was brought in our Constitution of India in the year 1975, that the election of the President, Vice President, Prime Minister, and Speaker of the Lok Sabha shall not be challenged in any court of law. The courts were prohibited to look into it. But fortunately, within three years, 1978, that amendment got struck down and it was removed and today it is obsolete. And so therefore today, one can file election petition before the court of law and challenge any election if it is done through illegal means. And here, a very important landmark judgment of election petition is that of the election of Indira Gandhi, which you must all be aware of. Raj Narayan versus Indira Gandhi, which actually brought emergency in India. It's a constitutional truth. Any scholar of constitutional will tell you this, that Raj Narayan versus Indira Gandhi is a landmark judgment of the Supreme Court of India. And where Mrs. Gandhi, who lost election, who actually won the election, through rigging the polls and Raj Narayan, who had contested against her from the Allahabad seat, challenged it in the Allahabad High Court. Allahabad High Court gave the judgment against Indira Gandhi, who was a sitting prime minister of the country. Now, if she is declared not elected because the election was through rigged polls and Raj Narayan won the judgment in his favor, if the sitting prime minister is disqualified, what would happen? So though she challenged the judgment in the Supreme Court of India, uh, uh, she directed the then prime minister, the president of India and emergency was invoked. And that is why India had an emergency from 1975 to 1977. Those who may not be born in that era can read about it. There's a lot of material, a lot of books available onto that emergency era. But that is an election constitutional dark chapter where the democracy of India was put under question mark. Now, I've tried in this little span of time to bring as much as the constitutional, legal, statutory provisions, the Supreme Court judgments and other trivia about the elections. But as there is a paucity and discipline of time, we have to close this talk. I thank you all to have given me opportunity and a privilege to address you all. And I hope that these sessions year after year will continue and I'll get more opportunities to enlighten you on this topic because there's a lot of material which is still available. In any case, if you have any questions or if you have any, your audience has any questions, I'm prepared for that. Thank you so much for today. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you so much.
Puneet sir for a very detailed and highly informative talk. And definitely, sir, we will remember the moment we start like coming offline to the college, we will extend our invitation, a special invitation for coffee and sandwiches. <laughs> we, will, we will keep that in mind, sir. And definitely. keep that pending, pending coffees and uh, that score sheet must be there. <laughs> sure, sure, sir, sure. Uh, the, yes, sir. The participants are all very impressed and the chat box is full of appreciation messages. Also, sir, there are few questions and uh, with your permission, I request uh, my colleague, Dr. Ucha Borkar and Dr. Karuna Sinha to please pose the questions from the chat box, Zoom chat box. Over to you, Karuna ma'am. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, my dear colleagues and dear participants. Usha ma'am, shall I begin? Yes, Dr. Sina. All right, sir, we have a couple of questions. Uh, the first question is being asked by Dhwani. She has asked, how can we ensure that postal ballots are not tampered with? Uh, Dhwani, this is a very foolproof system. And uh, as per the provisions of law, that ballot is almost or always sealed and uh, it has to be sent through proper channels to the Office of the Election Commission or wherever the returning officer of that area is. And he checks it in the presence of the representatives of all the political parties. And he shows them that sealed envelope and the seal is broken and envelope is opened in the presence of the representatives of all the political parties who are contesting so that they should not have any grievance. And once that seal is broken, envelope is opened and the ballot is taken out and that whoever has been voted, the vote is counted in the favor of that particular candidate. So there is no uh, kind of possibility of any tempering there. I hope that answers, Dhwani. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Next Thank question. You, yeah. Thank you, sir. Pusha yeah. yeah. So, sir, the next question is asked by Abhishek Chavan, and he says, will there be any means in future by which the soldiers in the armed forces can also vote? That I informed just now. Uh, Mr. Savant, I have informed him, uh, you must have kind of deflected during the speech. Ho jata hai. Election year, kanun ki jab speeches hoti badi boring hoti. Ho jata hai. Aap thoda sa nahi jhapak gaya honge, so gaya honge. Lekin mene bata hai, aapko ki soldiers at the border are given this opportunity of postal ballot. They do vote and they have been voting and they are voting more kind of religiously than we civilians. So Savan ji, aap karpia jaakte huye vote ki jega agli baar. <laughs> Chavan ji, sorry. Chavan ji. Chavan, Chavan. Yeah. Chavan ji, meri umid hai yeah. ki aap voting ke din mat so jaiye ga. <laughs> sir, I, Thank you, sir. Sir, actually asked the question when you were talking about the soldiers. Sir. Haan, to the aage ka aapne suna nahi. Aage ka no, suna I got the answer. Aray, but you're a handsome man, Chavan. I could see. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Alright, Chavan. Yeah. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Sinha. Thank you. Uh, sir, next question. Next question is. Sir, from... uh, next question is. Next question is from Ayushi, sir. She's asking Should voting be made compulsory? If yes, how can it be made? How can uh, it uh, be made sure that every individual casts his or her vote? Sir, you are on mute. Sir, sir, up on mute. Ji, sir. I'm sorry. No. Ayushi, Ayushi has asked this question. Yes, yes, Ayushi. Now, Ayushi, it's a debatable point. As I narrated in my speech, in my talk, that we Indians do not want any duty to be cast upon us. So compulsory voting was a proposal, but Nobody took it. 
although there are i told you there are as good as 22 countries 22 nations across the world who have made voting compulsory and they have put provisions of punishment if you do not vote now like one such country is bolivia which gives you an i card when you go to the polling booth the moment you cast a uh, vote you are given a particular card which entitles you for several benefits from the government till the next election because now you are having a card that you voted which is a proof so they do so much of incentive for voting on the contrary i told you there are countries who have put punishments if you do not vote like three months salary is been you are deprived of well if we start doing it in india there'll be havoc the howsoever justified things you start doing we get on to the streets we block roads we block trains we start doing what not because there is always one or the other section in our indian society who is opposed to everything now who there's on a lighter note there are certain jokes which talk about our characteristics as opposing everything that one ruling party leader was congratulated becoming a father he was so habitual of opposing everything and blaming the opposition he said nahi 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 ye mere ghar mein jo bachcha paida hua isme zarur opposition ka haath hai abhi kya keh sakte hum itne habitual ho chuke hain har cheez mein hum blame karte hain hum jante hi nahi ki kya sahi hai kya gal hai to bas blame karna hai sadkon pe utarna hai shor sharaba karna aur ab aap bataiye compulsory voting jo aadhi population picnics par ja rahi wo karegi kya वो तो मौका ढूंढ रही है कि कब लोनावाला चले जाए कब महाबलेश्वर चले जाए एंड रिस्पेक्टिव एरियाज ऑफ डिफरेंट स्टेट्स पीपल हैव जॉइंड आपके यहाँ भी पहाड़ होंगे आपके यहाँ भी जंगल होंगे पिकनिक स्पॉट्स होंगे वोटिंग की छुट्टी के दिन सब वहां भाग जाते हैं अभी सोचिए वो सिनेरियो कि आप सबके पीछे आप पिकनिक मना रहे हैं कोई झरने के नीचे नहा रहा है और वहां इलेक्शन ऑफिसर आपसे कह रहा है लो भाई साहब वोट कर दो कितनी फनी सिचुएशन तो आयुषी आई विश कि मेरी लाइफ टाइम में या आपकी लाइफ टाइम में वोटिंग कंपलसरी हो जाए बिकॉज जस्ट इनफॉर्म यू ऑल आई बीन अ वेरी रिलीजियस वोटर सिंस द डे आई बिकेम एलिजिबल टू वोट मैंने हर इलेक्शन में पार्लियामेंट स्टेट से लेके लोकल बॉडी की म्यूनिसपैलिटी तक सब जगह वोटिंग की है कभी कभी तो ऐसा हो गया कि इतने फ्रीक्वेंटली इलेक्शन हमारे देश में होते हैं कि उंगली में जगह ही नहीं थी कि ना उसमें वहां तिलक कैसे लगा है <laughs> दूसरी उंगली में तेलक लगाओ फिर तीसरी उंगली में लगाओ ऐसी भी नौबत आई और कलरफुल हाथ लेके हम घूमते थे पर आयुषी मैं आपसे बिल्कुल सहमत हूं आई विश दैट दैट डे कम्स वे आवर पॉपुलेशन इज मेड ड्यूटी बाउंड टू वोट एंड दैट डे विल बी वी विल बी गेटिंग द ट्रू रिप्रेजेंटेटिव एज अवर लीडर्स आई होप दैट आंसर एंड आयुषी बाई द वे नॉट ओनली टू आयुषी टू ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट लेट मी डिक्लेयर दैट in case if you find these uh, information valuable through the talk and like such other laws you all can log in to my youtube channel by typing just my name on youtube puneet chaturvedi advocate you will get uh, my speeches on various topics of law in the constitution of india the criminal law the civil law the property law there are several such speeches being organized by courts jails police department and other institutions so you can uh, kind of be benefited from that only you have to type on the search puneet chatur p u n d e t not i t uh, puneet chatur with the advocate to type and you can get a lot of information from there and uh, in case if you have any kind of a doubt you can reach out to one more uh, thing which i want to propose voluntarily free of cost to all your uh, viewers across india that uh, as far as laws are concerned uh, we have devised a team to answer your legal questions 
absolutely free of cost. You can write on an email called S for sugar, C for Chennai, another C for Chennai, SCC advocates, A D V O C A T E S at the rate gmail.com. You can mail your questions and you will promptly be informed with an answer. Ashu, Ayushi, I hope that answers your questions and all your future questions will also be answered. Thank you, sir. All right. Next question. Thank you, sir. Over sir, to Dr. Borkar. Dr. Borkar. Yeah, the next uh, question is by Neelam Singh and she says, sir, we know voting is a constitutional right. Anti-social person cannot vote, but a person with criminal record can be the candidate who will get all the protection from CEC and the security agencies of India. Why is uh, this so? Uh, whose question is this? Neelam Singh. Uh, Neelam ji, there is some uh, kind of uh, confusion in your mind uh, due to, obviously due to our news channels who kind of flood us with so much of misinformation. Convicted uh, criminal is not entitled to contest. Even if a person is in jail, he can contest till he is accused of a crime. Once a person is convicted of a crime or offence, uh, be clear, Neelamji, he cannot contest. And no kind of election commission's facilities will be given to him. It is only till the accusation is there, the conviction has not happened. Now, why this provision? I'll explain that also. Because Accusations can be made against any person. Anybody can, in India, we are such a democratic country that you can go and lodge a complaint against the Prime Minister of India. You can lodge a complaint against anybody. Lodging a complaint is not prohibited. So you can accuse anybody of anything. But that does not deprive that person from his legal act. If that happens, Half of the nation will not be able to do anything because they all will be accused. My wife accuses me every day for 10,000 things. I am accused. So, Neelam Ji, what do I tell you about my Durdasha? That's why accused is no prohibition. Only convicted person is prohibited and convicted person cannot contest election. I hope that answers your question, Neelam Ji. Yes, sir. Surely. Thank you, sir. All right. Any other question? Thank you, sir. Yes, uh, Dr. Sinha? Yes. Uh, yes, sir. A couple of questions are there. One question uh, that uh, is being asked by Insha. Insha is asking, sir, as you have mentioned, the election of India um, is an individual body and is not part of any government. Election commission, basically, she wants to ask. Election commission... Uh, of India is an individual body and is not part of any government or ruling party. But the commissioner of election of India is selected by the president of India, who is a part of the ruling party. Isn't it indirectly the ruling party is dominating the decision of choosing the commissioner, a commissioner of election commission of India? Insha ji, you have to say something wrong. President of India is not from the ruling party. Please correct yourself. Now, President of India and the governors of the state, the Supreme Court judges, are all elected through a particular procedure of the Constitution of India. Now, Article 72 onwards you will find the election of the president of India, which is an independent process. It is not elected by the government. So the president of India is not part of the government. It is part of the parliament. If you see the definition of the parliament, parliament consists of both the houses of parliament, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha and president of India. And that is why with every session of the parliament, the opening speech is done by the president of India, not by the ruling government. Similarly, even the speaker of the Lok Sabha, 
the moment he is elected as a speaker becomes an independent person he does not belong to any polit political party and that is why all across the political parties they re refer him as mr speaker not as the member of such and such political party the governors of the state the moment they are appointed on the constitutional post they does not belong to a political party so further to correct you miss insha just to remind you that every central government employee and when i say every means every central government of india is an employee appointed under the name and seal of the president of india and that president of india delegates its power to different departments heads who appoint that person including every military soldier please remember every military soldier whether it belongs to army navy air force is appointed in the name and seal of the president of india and his term as a soldier is only to the pleasure of the president of india that means the president of india can at any moment remove that person from the armed forces so you please correct your uh, misconception illusion that the president of india is a representative of the government he is not he is an independent body and as the president of india is independent constitutional body the governor of states are independent constitutional body so is the supreme court of india independent constitutional body not appointed by the government and thus even the election commission of india which finds place under article 324 of the constitution of india where the constitution of election commission is provided is absolutely independent body not by part of the government or appointed by the government so uh, i hope that clarifies the position and uh, it clears your doubt ms insha yes sir thank you sir uh we have a next question by sumati mishra she says is it true that postal ballots are counted only when there is a tie between two candidates no no it's not true okay it's counted while counting of the votes all right so uh so the next question is that youth who have got the voting rights now so as a responsible citizen what qualities should we see in a leader in order to vote for him who's asking this a uh, khushi khatri khushi ji main to is question ka answer karne ke kabil hi nahi hu kyunki candidate chunna aur kya quality dekhna kahan se dhoondenge hum log abhi to election mein aise aise candidate hain ki या तो नोटा दबा दो बेटा और या फिर जो लीस्ट वर्स्ट हो उसको चुन लो अभी क्वालिटी क्या बताऊं कौन सी क्वालिटी देखोगे बेटा कैंडिडेट्स में एंड प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड खुशी इतनी खुशी से मैंने लॉ पर टॉक दी है योर क्वेश्चन इज बियॉन्ड द प्रोविजंस ऑफ लॉ अभी लॉ पर पूछो तो मैं कुछ बताऊ क्वालिटीज वगैरह तो किसी साधु महाराज से पूछना जो बता पाए कि इसका भविष्य क्या है इस कैंडिडेट का चरित्र क्या है कैसे बताऊं मैं लॉ में तो कुछ पता नहीं चलता है बस हम तो इतने ही जानते हैं कि ही शुड नॉट हैव है काइंड ऑफ कन्विक्टेड क्रिमिनल पास्ट ही शुड नॉट हैव मॉरल टर्पिट्यूड ही शुड नॉट हैव पर ये देखो ना सभी आरोपी हैं खुशी जी आप अगले इलेक्शन में कैंडिडेट चुनने से पहले थोड़ा सा भगवान के सामने प्रार्थना कीजिएगा जो सबसे कम दुर्बुद्धि है कृपया मैं उसे वोट दे सकू क्योंकि <laughs> कैसे सिलेक्शन करोगे बेटा सब एक से एक धुरंधर है यहाँ पर मैदान में चुनना थोड़ा कठिन है और 
शायद कोई आपको एनलाइटन कर पाए इस बारे में मैं तो बिल्कुल नाकाबिल हूँ क्योंकि मुझे खुद ही बेटा ये परेशानी होती है खुशी जब मैं वोटिंग करने जाता हूँ तो सोचता रहता हूँ किसको दू किसको ना दू है ना और सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने भी इसी वजह से नोटा का प्रोविजन निकाला है कि अगर कोई अच्छा ना लगे तो नन ऑफ दी अबाउट ठीक है ना आई होप दैट आंसर एक्चुअली डज नॉट आंसर यू खुशी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन कैन आई स्पीक अ मिनट प्लीज प्लीज यूज दिस खुशी इज दैट खुशी यस सर अरे वाह खुशी बोलिए sir the thing is that as we are the youths we have got the chance to vote right now so we are not truly aware of of the politics going on so for that purpose for whom should we vote what as a responsible citizen should we see in the leader that was my question are to uh, recently matlab youth is given uh, that uh, since the inception beta khushi abhi tumko nahi mila abhi aapki waise to puchna nahi chahiye par <laughs> राइट राइट नाउ नाउ सॉरी आई एम तो रिसेंटली नहीं मिला है और दूसरी बात ये देखिए आप ऐसा क्यों मानती है कि आपने ये काबिलियत नहीं है चुनने की अरे हमारी गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया आपको काबिल मान रही है तभी तो ये अधिकार दे दिया आपको हमारी गवर्नमेंट ने अभी ये तय किया है खुशी कि आपका ब्याह 21 साल तक नहीं हो सकता लेकिन yes. वोट आप दे सकती हैं इतनी रिस्पॉन्सिबल आप हैं कि आप घर नहीं संभाल सकती आज 18 साल में उसके लिए आपको 21 साल तक वेट करना पड़ेगा पर देश संभालने की काबिलियत आपने आ गई है ऐसा हमारा पार्लियामेंट मानता है सर द थिंग इज इफ वी वुड है राइट the right uh, body or the right person then our country our india would have been at a higher level of things so the question which arises is whom to choose that is why i said it i know that you have a good question but i as i confess that i don't have that intelligence to answer you <laughs> because the reason is ki beta बहुत सारे प्रोविजंस ऐसे हैं कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया में और लॉ में जिसका मैं बहुत क्रिटिकल लाइक नाउ दैट यू हैव रेज दिस क्वेश्चन आई कैन गिव यू सर्टेन इनसाइट दैट आई विश वन डे देर इज एन अमेंडमेंट इन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया और द इलेक्शन प्रोविजंस वेयर वी कुड हैव राइट टू डी इलेक्ट अ पर्सन सपोज वी हैव इलेक्टेड वी मस्ट हैव अ राइट टू डी इलेक्ट वाई शुड वी बेयर एंड बर्डन आर सेल्स फ्रॉम अ पर्सन हु इज नॉट वर्थ and by mistake we have chosen him to rule us for 5 years i am of the opinion that we must also have a provision to de elect a person in between if he is a corrupt man if he is not worth our vote though by mistake we had voted him to kai bar bahut sare aise law provisions hain jiske bare mein alag alag seminars mein main bolta rehta hu par जैसे मैंने कहा कि अभी उस पोजीशन में नहीं हूं वो काबिलियत नहीं है कि मैं चेंज कर दू लॉ जो लॉ है उसी हिसाब से हमको करना है एंड वी हैव टू चूज द बेस्ट अमंग द सिनर्स राइट जितने पापी वहां दिखे तुमको उसमें से जो सबसे कम पापी हो उसको वोट दे देंगे ठीक है ओके खुशी थैंक यू सो मच ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सर वी हैव द लास्ट क्वेश्चन इन द चैट बॉक्स i don't know the name is not uh, written down because uh, the participant has joined with galaxy f41 so i don't have the name visible over there okay. but the question goes like this can we make it the rule as us president elect only twice time for any election in india yes this can be done but we uh, kind of have a dis- different system of governance we do not belong to the presidential system of the government we belong to the parliamentary system of the government and therefore the power does not lie with the president but with the prime minister and uh, if you are suggesting that like us where the president had got maximum two terms the prime minister should be limited to two terms then that can be a proposal and it can be weighed by the parliament on the basis of pros and cons it's a very hypothetical situation because uh, one particular person may not be worth even one chance 
and there must be somebody who is so good that he must be worth of several chances. So uh, we have seen the first Prime Minister of India being elected uh, for more than four times and he was the Prime Minister for 17 years which is still a record and uh, not broken by any Prime Minister till date. And he died as a sitting Prime Minister. Thereafter, the second Prime Minister, Srimati Indira Gandhi, had almost 16 years of the Prime Ministership. She also died as a sitting Prime Minister. So there is no such ban as on today, because how could you know that whether the person is worth or not? But it is also a debatable question. If you feel that our society is full of such wonderful Prime Minister materials, we can put a limit to his term. I hope that answers Mr. Galaxy 9, whoever you are. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I think there's one more question, uh, which is quite different one, but very interesting. The study of procedure of election and voting should be introduced as a subject at school level in theory as well as practicum so that there is no misleading and misunderstanding about the whole procedure by the time the student comes to an eligible age of voting. What is your say on this, sir? And is any step being initiated? Wonderful suggestion. I mean, uh, what can we my say other than complimenting you? It's a wonderful suggestion. Why not? Education of any kind at any level is always welcome. Maybe I will get a little more work and I will get a little more work in all the election procedures. It's a good thing. आपका जो सजेशन है उसका बहुत स्वागत है जी सर वी आर सेइंग दैट वाज द लास्ट बट डॉक्टर बोरका शैल आई टेक अप दैट बिकॉज़ द पार्टिसिपेंट्स आर गेटिंग सो क्यूरियस टू आस्क क्वेश्चंस एंड दे आर पोस्टिंग अगेन एंड अगेन द क्वेश्चंस आर कमिंग अप सर वन मोर क्वेश्चन हैज कम हाउ कैन वी कॉल बैक द इलेक्टेड एमपी इफ ही और शी इज नॉट फुलफिलिंग द इलेक्शन मैनिफेस्टो uh can we introduce some written qualifying exam for the contestants also can we of course we can why not i mean as i said that things are most welcome but as on today if your question is can we brought him back from that there is no such provision uh, elected member parliament cannot be brought back unless there is an amendment in the year 1985 in the constitution of india by the way, now that you've raised, uh, let me tell you that uh, an elected representative can be disqualified and that provision is given under 9th, 10th uh, schedule of the Constitution of India, which is added, uh, added later in the year 1985 by anti-defection law. So an elected representative can be disqualified from being the member of the parliament or member of legislative assembly in case if he has contested on the ticket of a political party or on the, uh, on the emblem of a political party and later after being elected, he changes his political party and defects to another political party, then he will be disqualified and his membership will be snatched. But not by the voters. That is why the political party and the parliament, the speaker can disqualify him as a member. But if your question is that can the voters disqualify, there is no such provision. And even in that anti-defection law, mind you, that if the entire political party on which he has been elected merges with another political party, then there is no anti-defection law. And if three-fourths uh, two third of the members of a political party defect from one political party to another political party, even then the anti-defection law does not apply. So there are so many provisos also there. But as far as your question is concerned, can the voters disqualify? I wish that law comes. As I just answering Kushi, I suggested that we can have this de-electing vote also. But that is as on today, it's not there. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, sir. That is all. That was all from uh, chat. And thank you so much for being so patient and patiently answering so many questions. 
thank you so much a heartfelt gratitude for being so patient sir thank you so much i and, madam i have become very patient after my marriage <laughs> you do not know how many questions i face after i return from court <laughs> i am cross examined more than the person in the witness box <laughs> khane se leke dawai khane se leke chai peene sab kuch question hota hai so i have become very patient थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू सर आप मुझे जल्दी से बुलाएंगे ऐसे ही पेशेंटली जी 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 शायद कुछ और है शायद कुछ और है आई हैंड ओवर द स्क्रीन टू अर्चना मैम अर्चना मैम थैंक यू सो मच डॉक्टर बोरकर एंड डॉक्टर सिन्हा नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट माय कॉलीग्स डॉक्टर वैशाली सावंत एंड डॉक्टर मंजीत सांबे टू प्लीज पोज द क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम द व्हाट्सएप चैट thank you archana ma'am and uh, sir let me admit it is sheer joy to listen to you uh, your insightful uh, you know talk uh, whether it is in the virtual mode or the face to face mode and we always uh, enjoy listening to your talk sir thank you sir uh, thank sir you, as sir. you have already admitted that you are used to answering so many questions so we won't let you go with only the <laughs> zoom chat questions there uh, are then, some questions then please remember that after this session i'm going to be subject and victimized to those questions also <laughs> as well today <laughs> so you can tell madam that the ladies have really asked me a lot of questions so spare me today <laughs> all right okay okay so there is one question by uh, mr rishi he says how are constituencies uh, defined whether it is on the basis of equal number of people because if the number of people are not equal then uh, it is not fair that a party wins from uh, constituencies where the number of people are less rishi please uh, understand that on this point there is clear provisions in the constitution of india as to how the constituencies are shaped and how the constituencies constituencies are reshaped after a particular period of time please understand every constituency is shaped and reshaped on the basis of its population not on the basis of its geographical territory therefore you may be finding that a territorial constituency in bombay may be very small but still it has it is a constituency because it's so thickly populated whereas a constituency in a rural area may be wide enough in territorial area because it is not thickly and densely populated so constituencies are always shaped and deshaped and reshaped on the basis of the population you must have heard that recently the government of india has initiated the delimitation process of the jammu and kashmir and there is a lot of opposition to this by the valleys parties because unfortunately till the removal of article 370 of the constitution of india read with article 35a till it was removed jammu and kashmir was dominated by their own constitution and they have defectively a kind of shaped their constituencies to give more constituencies to the kashmir valley vis a vis to the jammu region and the ladakh region therefore although the population of valley was less but the constituencies were more and therefore those who win the valley were ruling jammu and kashmir and after the abrogation of article 370 why those political parties are rattled now because the delimitation process according to the constitution of india's provisions have begun which talks that the constituency shall be shaped and reshaped on the basis of the population and if you read the provisions just to give you an insight the population is always counted as 1 is to 1000 and that is how the numbers are calculated and on the basis of which that constituency is shaped and even for the presidential election a voting is measured on the basis of the number of votes 
a candidate is representing so rishi i hope that answers your question and as yes, i said that these are elaborated uh, subjects of discussion uh, we can have one talk only dedicated to the limitation and delimitation of the constraints so there are very elaborated subjects in short i had tried to explain thank you sir so yes thank you sir uh, sir one last question i have one question so there are certain political parties when uh, during before the elections they declare that we would be giving laptop to the women we would be depositing money in the account so isn't it wrong isn't it a kind of a bribe so if i am a woman in need of a laptop i'll surely vote for a party sir so can't the election commission take note of the such things i mean the, i feel it's quite wrong absolutely right i cannot agree more with you this is actually a malpractice this must stop why only laptops and amounts into account etc i say that these freebies also should be stopped who are these political parties to have announcing that we will give you this much free that much that electricity free or that subsidy free because that money belongs to us not to them please understand none of the political party gives these freebies from the account of the political party they give it from the exchequer of the state and the exchequer of the state collects money from the taxpayers so it's like my money and somebody else is declaring that i'll give you free are if i have the passion and heart to do charity if i want to give something to somebody free i will give, give it personally why do i need a elected representative to give something free on my behalf so i cannot agree more with you these are all malpractices and election commission must take a very strict note of it and i wish had somebody like tn session was there he would have taken by now all these political parties by task it is very unfortunate that this is going on and because as the expression says sabhi theli ke chatte batte hain therefore nobody goes against anybody else in the supreme court of india otherwise the supreme court of india will also pass a stricture against this freebies and all these being uh, promised and given and all that to lure voters on the name of greed and freebies and laptops and what not why should it be in fact if you uh, kind of being aware of the recent scenario where the five states are going to election in the news we heard that election commission put a prohibition against the rallies due to the advent of this covid omicron now there's hue and cry that why the rallies are not allowed i fail to understand that if you work so good people will vote to you even otherwise like for example if i am a lawyer and i represented somebody in a court of law and if i did a good work my experience is that in future whenever somebody gets some legal problem he again comes to us i don't go and propagate to him every day bhai sahab kuch divorce divorce karana ho to bata do hamare paas abhi स्कीम चल रही है आप एक काम करो कहीं मर्डर कर लो मैं आपको लैपटॉप दे दूंगा ऐसा तो कोई हम एडवर्टाइजिंग कर नहीं रहे उसके बाद भी वो जीवन में कभी उसको कुछ लीगल परेशानी होती है फिर आता बिकॉज इज सो हैप्पी विद आर सर्विसेस एंड आई एम टेलिंग यू विद फुल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी एंड एक्सपीरियंस बिकॉज वी आर इन द प्रोफेशन ऑफ लॉ फॉर हंड्रेड एंड एटीन ईयर्स नाउ और माई फोर जनरेशन माई ग्रेट ग्रैंड फादर ग्रैंड फादर माई फादर एंड आई नाउ थर्टी टू ईयर्स आई एम प्रैक्टिसिंग इवन वेन वी हैव लॉस्ट केसेस even those clients come back to us that i am very happy with your performance though we lost because of my case may be weak but i have no grudges against you in the next case also i want to engage you so if you do a good work you don't need to give these laptops and rallies and all these things you don't need to your voters they even otherwise vote for you so i totally agree with you on this point So thank you so much for answering all those questions. Thank you so much. Okay, over to you, Archana, madam. 
Uh, yeah, thank you, Vaishali ma'am. If you can kindly make the announcement for the feedback also. Uh, yes, sir. The party, all the participants, you are requested to fill the feedback form. The link for the feedback form would be open till 8 p.m. And the link would be posted both on Zoom chat as well as the WhatsApp group also. And so please me, do remember. And let me do that rally and canvassing. Please give me good votes, good feedback. <laughs> So, so that I will uh, invite it again by Gujarat Research Society. Please, please, please. Sir, sir your aura is still there. You need not ask for it. You, you just no, no, get I it, just sir. Sir, sir. You are our star. star. You we are know, the star, know, yeah. sir. I <laughs> learned just now, na, bhai, canvassing kami padti hai. Ah, kami sir, politician, politician hai. mode pe, sahi baat hai, sir. <laughs> yes, over to you, Archay. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Just one last thing now, sir, of formality, definitely. I now request my colleague, Dr. Pallavi Talekar, to please present the concluding remarks and vote of thanks. Pallavi, ma'am, over to you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kadgiri. Good evening, all. It's my proud privilege to propose vote of thanks to uh, sir in today's session. Our college, AJ College, of Education has organized this particular webinar on voting rights to spread awareness amongst the voters regarding effective participation in electoral process. And I am sure you all are satisfied with the way we have conducted the webinar. I'm sure everybody will agree with me that uh, we are very fortunate to have uh, Advocate Puneet Chaturvedi with us, with his humor, with his a lot of expertise on the topic. He has convinced each one of us about our voting rights. Sir has reinforced that Parliament is our house in India and voting rights are most important element of the electoral system. And of course, it's not a fundamental right, but constitutional rights provided to each citizen of India. Sir explained us the working of the election commission in so much of detail. I think right now, everybody with, is very clear with the process of election and roles each uh, member of election, uh, election commission has played. Advocate Chaturvedi has desired that all voters need to be active partners in election process and therefore he wants everybody to vote uh, during election. And for this purpose, more young voters should be encouraged and to take part here in the election process. And with, after listening to Sir, I am sure everybody is motivated uh, to do his duty. As Sir said, it's not a right, but it's a duty. And that's how we need to look at uh, voting. He reiterated the commitment towards reaching out to the vast voters and promoting informed and ethical voting, which is very, very important in today's situation. Sir, you have provided your valuable views on the topic, and I'm sure all the participants are inspired by your sparkling thoughts, and they will, they, they will do the needful now in the next election. Those who are, who are not having voters card right now in their hand, of course, they are going to uh, go and uh, apply for getting those cards and do their voting rights. So we are very grateful to you that you took out some, some time from your busy schedule to be here. So we know since morning you're busy in Supreme Court and then to till evening you're high or, you know, on energy. The way you have answered all the questions or even explained your thoughts, we all are inspired from you. On behalf of our management, our principal, Dr. Anita Swami, Madam, entire ABC family, all the participants, I explained a sincere gratitude to you, sir. It was very wonderful listening to you, sir. Uh, it was not uh, so going ahead. The program could not have been a success without right support. Our management, Gujarat Research Society, always supports us in all the endeavors. The guiding light helps to accomplish the goals of any event. Our principal, Madam Dr. Anita Swami, is always a guiding force in our journey to success. My heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Anita, Madam, for always motivating us. No event is a success without people 
to dedicate their uh, resources and time to make the uh, make everything faultless. We at AJC, we believe in teamwork. I'm very grateful to all my colleagues, we call it AJC family, for the help that they have provided us for the success of this webinar. I express my gratitude to all the participants to connect to us on Zoom for this program, asking such a wonderful questions and being very patient listeners here and wonderful listeners who are being inspired by the thoughts of uh, uh, Advocate Chaturvedi. Thank you very much for being here for the program. The program is a grand success only because of you all participants. Thank you very much for being here with all of us. Thank you all. Over to you, Archana Ma'am. Yeah, I think Manjit ma'am, if you would like to say some, because I can see you are just feeling like appreciating, sir, you may please express your words and kindly Thank you. express it because <laughs> sir has missed meeting you na? in person. He remembers our staff room. We all meeting and interacting. So please Manjit ma'am, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Shreema madam. Sir, it was wonderful. We are fortunate that we could uh, organize this session and listen to you, listen to your expertise and your uh, sense of humor. Uh, and uh, we hope that you have really inspired and all our uh, young students would be voting this year. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Manjit ma'am. Uh, Professor Mahindra, sir, we could just see you, your hands are raised. Uh, and to all the participants, I know, sir, it has been a really busy day for sir, right since morning. Therefore, he has given the time of 4.30. He is really fighting cases, but still he gave. So, please requesting all the participants, sir's email ID, we are going to share it on the WhatsApp group. You may please pose your questions to sir. Sir will definitely reply your queries on the mail. So kindly excuse for the time constraint for all those whose questions could not be addressed, but we assure you that it will be answered by sir. So please put your questions in the uh, WhatsApp group. Thank you. Uh, thanks to one and all. Thank you once again, sir, for really giving out your time for your busy schedule. And thanks from our principal, Dr. Anita Swami, ma'am, sir. She has expressed it. But please convey my regards once this COVID scenario gets over. We will definitely love to have sir with us. Thank you, sir. Thank you Thank so you, much. Ma'am, uh -huh. you. Ma may I just request you to kindly end with the session? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.